Hi friends, my name is Borro Dante, and welcome back to the Moment of Supremacy. Enter progress. Enter comments. A lot of people suggested to raise the arm of the king, so he would actually try to negotiate or something like that. Great idea. More expression, more fear in his pose and all that. Cool. Also, longer earlobes. So he wouldn't look so much like a goblin or whatever. Repose the guard on the floor. Good idea. Doesn't look like a pose of a person who fell while running. Will fix. Halo effect by a planet. This was intentional. I'm not 100% on board with this, just an idea. Plus, don't forget that we won't see the whole thing, it will be just a slight portion of the planet that's lit by the sun, that's there. Or maybe there, really, we probably should replace it somehow. Maybe from the top. Yeah, I guess from the top would be a good idea. Adding crossbow for one of the guards, or replacing their sword with a crossbow. I don't know, doesn't seem like a very good idea. Like, the point is it would show that if, even if the character would fly away, he would still be chased. That's exactly what we want to avoid. The wings are exactly the symbol of victory. Yeah, so, uh, the question about wings, not everyone's happy about that. Well, wings are not gonna be the first thing you will notice. They're gonna be really, like, in the shadow, covered with this thing, probably even more. It's like a second stage allegory, so... I don't know, I think it's gonna be cool, I wanna keep it there. It's more like beyond the story itself, more like just uh, something to show the invincibility of the character, something like that. This is just my note that we should probably replace this guy, but I'm not sure I'm gonna do that in sketch at all. Raise the Sinister's chin a bit, like he's more of a dominant pose. Again, I don't want to do that, he's gonna look like an asshole. I don't want him to actually be an asshole about what he's doing. He should be all the way on guard, ready to be in action and not being too cocky about this. Spiky hair to make him look cool. No problem with that, let's do that. Now, increasing the composition a bit to the left and at the bottom. So, we would see a bit more of this plane. Probably a good idea, so we would see the crowd better a little bit. I don't know how much, but we'll try that. Now, the last thing I drew here is making this leg a bit smaller and maybe think about the sizes of the feet. Like, someone said this foot is smaller than this one comparing to the leg. We'll see. Now, there was a couple fronts who suggested, like, to change the angle a little bit or redraw the pose of the king so he would be standing a bit differently. Well, I don't think we want to redraw anything big anymore. Like, someone might not like it completely, but I'm pretty much okay with the base of everything. So, let's start with adding some space at bottom left and redrawing this guard. And also the arm of the king. And everything else will be already in the color. Today we have to make the basic spots of everything. So, let's start! So, I'm guessing something like this. There will be a lot more space, like blank space on the ground, so we'll be able to pose this knocked out guard better, because we really didn't have enough space for that, so that's convenient. Maybe some kind of structure in the middle of the stadium gonna take place, and that's something not very well defined. Yeah, so I guess something like this. Now for the guard. Man, it's such a mindfuck to figure this out. These are the poses I have never drawn before. Pretty much all of these poses. <laughs> Okay, there's no way his pelvis is so pressed to the ground. And his shield is like here. And his sword is, um... Uh... I don't know, let's stick it up his ass or something. What happens when you fall with a sword? <laughs> probably something not very good. Well, the sword is probably the first thing he reached for, so... He might be in his hand. Kinda like that. I hope it's not a completely horrible geometry, but there's a good chance. Well, you have to wake up your hand with something. Now, let's do the arm of the king. So, kinda like this, and then the palm is kinda like here. 
and he's kind of trying to touch the sword to put it down, but not really daring to do that. That kind of stuff. Mm, I don't know. Not enough expression in the hand itself. Maybe let's go with my brand thing, like like this a bit. Let's give it a try. I think it might be actually cool for this one. Because we need, like, all the stuff behind the arm and that guard, they will be like fogged out, they're not important, so we'll really like go into highlight the contour of the king, so it's supposed to be like very readable. Let's give it another go. I mean this stuff is basically going to be the same. By the way, this should be like this, this should be like this, and that should be like that. The forearm. I know words. The forearm should be hanging down a bit with gravity. This is such a hard angle, actually. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't raise his pinky because it would feel like, would you like a cup of tea? I, we're, we're not trying to do that. Cup of tea? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so hard. Thing is, it shouldn't be bent that much. It's this shape, but kind of like this. Ah. Oh. That's better. Yeah, kind of like that, only it should be not messed up. Actually, kind of works, I think. Especially after I remove this area from here, it's not supposed to be seen. I don't know, let's keep it this way. It kind of works, only let's... Yeah, it's better than this, I think. Let's fix this area. Oh my god, I forgot to add nipples last time. Jesus Christ, that was a close one. <laughs> so this nipple will be slightly raised since the arm is raised. <laughs> Almost neglected my fame of a nipple master. Okay, I like it. Let's do that. Now let's bring back this guard's crotch. Kind of cool, only I think this should be a bit hidden behind yeah like a bit like this you see because his chest will be covering it up and this line should be a bit straighter like that i feel like i snapped the shoulder up forward just to draw the arm the way i'm used to do it okay it will do for now next is let's drop the spots now we really have to define the lighting i think it should be kind of like this so this guy... Oh, yeah, let's actually try this. I I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's kind of like playing with shadows to figure out what details we'll see, what details will disappear. So this guy's face will somehow disappear, right? But probably not too much since it's... No, still kind of like that. So here will be shadow... There will be projected shadow. This thing is probably also... So, the sun is slightly from the far away, heading slightly closer to the camera. Not this much, but a little bit. That's why everything that's facing us is gonna be dark. Not exactly dark, let's not forget. It's not just gonna be a pure black, it's gonna be a skylight. Which is a lot of light. Okay, let's continue with the guy. I just realized the geometry of the sword is weird. They're kind of standing in front one of the other. That means the sword is gonna be like facing away like that. It's gonna be basically parallel to our view. Or perpendicular. Jennifer. Yeah, more like this. Oh yeah, let's fix the sinister's leg. That's what I forgot to do. And you didn't say anything. So, this is the case. It should be just slightly smaller, right? Yeah, I guess it feels right. Like, I was going for some kind of very strong perspective effect, which doesn't really make sense here. <laughs> like, it's only that leg that was in that perspective. So, the sword is kinda going from here, dropping some shadow on the leg in a very cool way. Probably that's where the sword shadow will be. And this is still a sword shadow. Hmm, kind of cool. 
There will be a lot of shadow here. And this shadow will be kind of strong one, because there's not a lot of skylight in there as well. There will probably be a sword in here, but we have to figure out the angle. I guess this one would be good. Feels like it's not ruining the composition, I guess. So the whole crowd will be not lit by the sunlight. Lucky people, they won't be hot. It's always a problem when you're at the stadium. Done! Well, maybe not. Okay, I think it's working out for me for now. So, I think let's start working with color. We'll probably add, you know what? It's gonna be kinda cool. We actually have to add that right now. There won't be a lot of shadow on this guy. He will be like specifically highlighted because this wall of the king's throne is of reflective stone so he will be catching like a reflex very strong one so he will all be like glowing a bit that's totally a cool thing to do here kind of like that and it's going away as it goes lower so we mostly see his face and chest highlighted oh yeah this is gonna be cool let's make this layer multiply and in cool tint so it would work right away like a cool shadow exposing pure skylight that'll do for now okay the main color is kind of dark i think the whole thing is kind of a darker than metal gray stone like the floor and this thing as well i guess like dark marble or something like that so it's lit by sun, sort of like this, and in shadow it will turn into that, I guess. Let's give it a try. Now let's fill it in completely and then add red carpet and such on top. Now let's add carpet right away, definitely brighter than that. I kind of don't want it to be this orange tint all over the picture so let's make it a bit cooler despite the fact that there's sun yeah this is kind of better maybe even darker stone though we'll still add a lot of reflection on it so it's gonna be brighter but of course we're gonna bring some sort of variety by adding bright stone in here and i think on the armrests yep that works Maybe something like that. Now the sky. Filling the whole thing with the blue. Even the very back, like the forest and the town. Because it's gonna be really mixed a lot with the sky color, with the air perspective. But let's not forget that we wanted to expose some kind of space. So let's make a pretty strong gradient with a soft brush, because we're not masochists. I just remembered, there was also the idea about floating islands, flying islands. I guess let's drop it, because there's not actually a good place to put it. Plus, I already used that idea in my Valkyrie painting. Now, what I was going... oh yeah. Some ambient shadows. Now, let's paint some characters already. The main guy's clothes is going to be kind of grayish brownish, so he has to be poor looking. Brighter than the stone, that's for sure. Let's start with this as a base. Now, remember one of the fronts said that it would be a cool idea to play with colors of skins. So the king should be kind of slightly greenish, I guess. The main guy should be slightly violet, maybe, but kind of like glowing on the sun, like cool one. And the guards should be maybe even kind of close to red. Not very strong one, but noticeable difference in color. And it will look cool. Or racist. Let's find out. So that's the king's skin. There's probably not gonna be any other place where the skin is visible on him. Now the guy, kind of like this. And the guards, they're probably gonna wear gloves, right? So no hands as well. King's clothing. I think it should be darker than stone, 
on the outside, but there's like a rich material and red insides, something like that. Close to Dracula, I guess, but maybe not. Kanye West style. Maybe. Purple man. Now for the guards, they're going to be kind of reflecting a lot of skylight. So maybe just cover them with dark skylight color. For now. Now the crown should also be, I think, not golden, but like platinum or something. Like a very shiny yet not yellow metal, because I don't know, I don't want to see gold here. Something like that, super straight and dominant and oh my god, like another planet Svastika. Now let's add half shadows. This is my biggest mistake that I do a lot as I started realizing recently. Is that usually when I define where the terminators are, I start working on the shadow areas and completely neglecting the lit areas. They're like completely flat. This is a very different angle. This floor should be a lot brightly lit than these vertical pieces. So let's take care of that. Kind of started this weird way when everything is in layers. Well, let's go on. There we go. This is how the vertical things should go. There will be a lot of them. Almost everything will become a lot darker. Let's try to move this thing. There's more space here now, maybe it's gonna go like this. Now let's add the wing color. Really close to white. Someone suggested to make like a crow wings with all that effect of rainbow reflection on them. But I don't know. He looks dark enough already, if we'll add black wings that will look really confusing for the message. We might bring wings even more into shadow somehow, but for now let's keep it this way. Oh wow, it for some reason looks so much better when I mirrored it. <laughs> I guess just because my eyes adjusted too much to that angle and I stopped actually seeing what's going on. It's actually kind of cool should add more perspective effect on the audience. Man, it would be cool to merge everything together right now and actually start working in one layer because it's so much easier, not just easier, it's completely impossible to do on the proper level when it's all broken up. But I just wanted to make sure we establish the colors correctly. Because right now I can easily change any color, because they're segregated in layers. You know what, let's actually drop this episode now. You tell me what you think about my decisions on colors, and then we'll move on with some adjustments. Like if a lot of people will say that color totally doesn't work, let's change that. So we'll do that. Yeah, and for now I guess we should stop here. Tell me what you think about this guy. Is he too small or something? I can't understand. Something's going on there. The blue guards, there will be like full reflective metal. They're like shiny armor kind of thing. That's why everything that's of metal is of this color. So this is the full view with the sketch, without a sketch. Looking really messy, but there's no way to go around this when we're in layers. So yeah, tell me what you think. Oh, one last thing. Uh, sometimes comments become really massive and there's like a shit ton of them. Not always, but sometimes it happens. I don't know when and why, but if you want to write a comment and there's already a lot of comments, Try to just upvote comments that you agree with instead of writing the same thing in a separate big post. Cause this time it was really kind of already overwhelming to read all that amount of text. Some of you guys are really getting into it. Such big texts with suggestions. It's really awesome. Thank you very much. 
but just make sure that you're not writing the same thing again if it's already been said by someone else. I'll mostly pay attention to comments that have upvotes on them, something like that, I guess. In case there will be too much comments, probably there won't be. <laughs> well, anyway, this is the first version of Colors of the Moment of Supremacy. And I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, take reasonable breaks, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! There will there will probably be a sword in here.